So uh, this is something uh, that we've thought a lot about. Does the type of biolog biologic mesh matter? Uh, of course, is a hot topic, and the evidence is interesting. Um, choice of human, porcine, and bovine are the main categories uh, that we've considered. Dr. Rosen's group has demonstrated. This is the pregnancy experiment uh, that Dr. Matthews referred to, so this stretches, uh, and it's related to the high elastin content. I don't think that the pregnancy experiment really uh, can extend to xenografts, however, uh, that have a different molecular composition. Uh, but we've seen uh, that the human acellular dermal matrix doesn't work as well. Uh, we looked at bovine versus porcine acellular dermal matrix. We, we felt that there weren't credible studies comparing these two. Uh, we figured that the complication profiles uh, would be similar and the results would be similar. Um, so we looked at 69 stratus patients and 51 surgeon patients, so a porcine and a bovine extracellular matrix, uh, all for ventral hernias and oncology resections. Uh, we did uh, subcategorize by ventral hernia working group classifications. We found that the groups uh, broke down similarly. Uh, the overall complication rate was higher in the stratus group, however, uh, this was uh, largely medical complications, probably not attributable to the biological properties of the mesh. The surgical complications were similar, hernia rates were similar, bulge rates were a little higher in the stratus group, and at 0.07 this was approaching significance. Uh, we also collect an intraoperative adverse events database in the operating room. This is a voluntary reporting uh, device. There were seven uh, patients in our cohort who were reported in that database. They were all in the stratus group. Uh, 10% versus 0% uh, uh, in the bovine matrix group, uh, and that was significant. So we went back and we asked the surgeons, uh, we, we asked them for pictures, and we found uh, that the, all the events were operative, intraoperative device failures. There were some small tears, uh, there were some larger tears, and, and there were some truly uh, extensive and pervasive tears. And we went back and we looked at this subgroup. Se uh, two of those seven went on to a hernia, which is 30% compared to 5.5% for the rest of the cohort. So this made a difference. I think it's worth reporting that no one who is financially involved with TEI uh, reported any of those device failures. Uh, it was um, the rest of the uh, population of surgeons that did that. And so uh, as kind of taking, taking this one step further, we wanted to look at the off-the-shelf mechanical stability of these two products. Is there a difference in strength? Uh, I think this is something for which there's still uh, some controversy. Uh, so we look at uniaxial tensile strength, suture retention, uh, which is basically a suture pullout test, and tear resistance, which is the propagation of a tear. Uh, and what we found was uh, we used the three commercially available uh, Surgeman products, which are two, three, and four millimeter, and the Stratus product, which is uh, two millimeters. And what we found was uh, that the, even, the, even the thinnest uh, Surgeman product was 40% stronger uh, than the Stratus product, and the, and the thickest product was about 250% stronger. In terms of uniaxial tensile strength, uh, when you looked at suture retention or pull-through strength, we used a 26-gauge uh, steel wire for this. And, uh, Sorry, I'm just going to go back to that. And uh, the, again, the weakest, uh, uh, the thinnest piece of Surgeman was 40% stronger. Uh, and, but interestingly, the four millimeter piece of Surgeman, uh, the steel wire broke uh, on every sample. So we were unable to actually test the fail strength of the Surgeman, which gave us a lot of confidence in the off-the-shelf strength of this. Tear resistance, similarly, uh, the thickest piece uh, was five times as strong as the, as the Stratus piece. So, now, this just shows some of the tear patterns. Uh, the materials are somewhat different. They tear differently. Um, and this just shows the linear relationship between thickness and strength. Uh, the porcine products are here at the bottom, and then the bovine products go up with thickness here. And more of the same. And so uh, we felt confident in concluding based on this that the, the bovine product was substantially stronger, less likely to tail, and less likely to fail from suture pull-through. Uh, than the porcine product. So you might say, well, what about long-term uh, uh, sustenance and superiority in that respect? Uh, I want to go back again to the uh, bridge repair uh, article, which we recently published in JAX, which showed a 15% hernia rate for the porcine product versus a 6% in the bovine product. as a hazard ratio of 0.5, which means up half the risk of hernia for the, for the bovine product. Uh, and this was approaching significance at 0.069, uh, so a strong trend. Uh, but I think if you look at the narrative of this evidence as you go through, what you start to see is perhaps the mechanical superiority of the product off the shelf, uh, intraoperatively a lower device failure rate, and then the long-term hernia rate, which, which does seem to be lower.